Good morning, everybody. It's David here at Becker Art, and today's David, our Sunday Sunday demo with David. So we're doing a little demo today. Um, I'm going to try to do this um, snow scene of a dog sled, which I uh, I don't think I've ever done a dog sled painting before. So we're going to see, and um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I work, how I work my my magic, I guess. <laughs> and so let's go over to our tabletop. And um, I was looking at this this morning, and I'm trying to. I, when I look at a painting, when I look at a photo, I kind of look at it in black and white of like the, the no tan that we talk about a lot of times in design. And I was wondering if this was a good design, and I think I, I can make it a good design. And the fact that the, up here, let me see if I have my pointer here. Hold on, let me get my pointer. So if I look up here and... Um, on the top, if you look, I, I brought in the black and white with this, and so I wanted to see if I can, if it's not broken up between the bottom and the top being dark, and so it's like layered across horizontally. And if you look at my picture, um, I'm not doing as much as uh, much of a panoramic like it is up here. It's a little bit squished in a little bit, so when I drew it, I I'm put things closer together, so it's not the exact proportions of my photo. But I think it'll still work, and I'm gonna bring this dark down ag against the dogs. I think and those are gonna be co um, snow-covered trees, and that I don't think they're gonna make these warm. So I'm just thinking about things about how to make it um, well composition, because it's really the number one thing is a drawing. Number two is your composition, and making sure that that looks like like last week when we were doing the the tree, <laughs> the tree. Um, <laughs> Um, it, or the ornament in the tree, the ballerina. Um, I would, didn't look at that close enough, um, the no tan and the design of it. And so we're going to try to design this one a little bit better <laughs> and try to make sure. Because it really is important. Um, if you don't have the design right, then you can do the best painting possible. But if you don't have that right, then it's a little tough. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Maria. And let's see what we can go. I'm going to get going here. Let's turn that off. Okay, so, and I was also thinking about when I'm doing the no tan and when I'm doing the the value study, when I'm working the value study, I'm thinking about how I'm going to paint it too. It's the it's a process of how you're going to paint the painting. That's why you do a that's why you do a value study. It's just, it gives you the process of how you're going to paint it. And I made this is going to be a dark, and this is and the dogs and the sled are a dark and these trees in the front, but the mountain on this side is a dark, but on this side it's going to be a light. So I kind of like that look where it kind of comes forward, you know, even though it's it, this is farther back than these mountains, but it'll give me that nice look like you're going back in distance. So I'm going to do the, I'm just going to wet the sky, I think. Um, I could normally, I would go into the, into because this is darker, the, the mountains are going to be darker. So I'd go in there, but I want to, I don't know if I should. Now I'm just going to do... I'm gonna go around the mountains this way I don't have to wait for it to dry because otherwise I have to wait for it to dry and to put the darker wash in and it will be a soft edge. So let's, I'm using Vertiter Blue. There's another blue I just put on my palette. It's a great blue for um, a purpley blue. Vertiter, Vertiter, I think they call it. And um, I find it to be a really nice blue for for snow and um, and also skies. I don't, I gotta get a cobalt on my, on my I notice I don't have a cobalt, and this would probably be a great time to have a cobalt for the sky. So there's so many different shades of blue, and um, so what I'm going to do is just real lightly put in the blue. And this is going to be one wash, one wash of the blue. And I'm working on a panel. I'm working on a, um, on a Strathmore, I mean Crescent panel. which is a little bit different than working on some of the paper. Um, it, it's just, it's almost hot press. It's kind of like very, um, very smooth. <clears throat> I don't get as much texture on it. And so I kind of, I can't wait until Hope or until um, Legion brings out their panels so that I can start working on their. And I didn't wet the whole sky. I'm wetting as I go along. I'm going from left to right and I'm just going to kind of bring in and make it lighter over here right and so now let's just wet this area right up here real lot i'm gonna keep that really light so that the even the sky goes from light to dark from dark to light 
And like I said, I know I, I probably could go into these um, mountains because they are darker than the sky. But I'd have to wait for it to dry because I want a hard edge when I go back in. So it's just timing is all is all the reason I'm not doing it. So then I make this corner a little bit light like it's shining. The sun is shining really bright right here. And yesterday in class, on my Saturday class, um, a big issue was how to make the sky, the sky super, super um, smooth without getting granulation. And um, one of my students was getting granulation that she didn't want granulation. And one thing about watercolor, depending on what, what medium you get or, I mean, what company you get, certain companies have more granulation than other companies in their watercolors. And Holbein um, you know, makes their watercolors very finely ground so that you don't get as the granulation like you would for a company that doesn't grind it as much. But then by grinding it down to a really, really fine pigment, then you get um, brighter colors. So it's one or the other. And um, But we are talking about how to get a nice smooth smooth wash and the way to get that is going in first wash and let the water make the smoothness you don't you don't rub it out to make the smoothness you have to have enough water and let the pigment just settle down into the water and that smooths it out it's not it's not you who is smoothing it out it's the water of course you're putting the water down so yes it is you but you let the water do its thing and let it smooth out the let it smooth out the the wash basically and it takes practice because you need enough water and you can't constantly go back into it like see how it's not really smooth now i want to make it a really smooth smooth sky but it's tough because you have to let the water let the water make the smoothness in your pigment because it's taking your pigment and just and letting it float and it's just going to sit there and then go into the water and just smooth itself out all right and so that's how you make a so smooth soft edge everybody everybody i talked to said that this was gonna be an interesting one yeah betsy it's gonna be interesting <laughs> um i'm not sure because like i like i said i've never done a um painting like this before so we're not sure so now I would normally I go right into the mountain because I'm coming forward, but I have to I want it to dry so I can get a really hard edge there. And look at this part right here; it's getting a little bit drier than this part that was a little bit less wet. And so I'm gonna get this little edge there. And the way to get rid of that is take the um take the water out of your brush, and then just blend that together. Like just blend it. Oh, no, it doesn't. That's not gonna work. Because what's happening is one part was a little bit drier than the other part. And so um, that little bit of water that was drier is going to go in there. So, okay, it's not so smooth. But <laughs> so like I said, it takes practice to smooth out an edge to make a super smooth edge. You have to let the water, it has to be full enough with water. Then you let the pigment just settle in there and just blend down to that. And... Um, also, for anybody who's watching, if anybody's new here, um, please ask away questions. Um, that's why I'm here. I'm um, just showing you what I'm doing on a Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Maria. Thanks for that. You can. Yes, you can use your hake brush. And, um, but if I smooth across, it's going to go across my... Let me see if I got my hake brush. Where's my hake brush here? So if you get a hake brush like this, you can smooth out the area. But I think what would happen is I'm going, I would get into my mountains. And so that's going to make it dirty. Um, but let's try it. What the heck? All right. Thanks, everybody. I totally forgot about that. So with your hake brush, if you, and it also has to be pretty wet. But this is, this part's almost dry. Well, let's see. And if you have a brand new hake brush, like this is a brand new one, I'm losing some of the bristles, which I, you see, it does make it a little bit smoother. This part dried, so if it's dry already, then, and and I should have taken, this is a brand new hake brush. Um, it's a bunch of little brushes put together, but um, you, keep, you use it dry, you use it dry, 
but it, you can't you can't I'm not sure if you can see it but I lost a lot of the, the hairs because it's brand new and so news normally what I would like to do is wet it and then just um, use it on something just to get rid of the loose hairs because it's brand new but thanks thanks Maria that's a good idea I totally forgot about that and when you use that, you use it while it's wet. Like this side worked, but this side it didn't because this side was almost dry already. And so it doesn't work when it's dry. Okay, so let's go down into this part right here. I'm not going to do the mountain yet because this part is still wet. And so I want to have a nice hard edge there. And it's going to be darker mountain than the sky. So what I'm going to do is go down here and do a little bit more lavender blue. Kind of a grayish, gray, um, lavender grays my blue a little bit. So... It's not so vibrant blue in here. And I'm just going to put these little marks in the snow. And I don't have to get them exactly like they are there. I'm just going to pretend like they're here and here. And you can make them a little bit darker with a little bit darker purple. So it's basically a gray. It's a gray, the, 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 the shadowing up here, a blue and purples. And the stone underneath it is actually black and dark gray. So, And then some of these edges I want to get soft. And so I'll spatter a little bit and put some of the water in there. Now this is too even here. Let's go right into him. He's darker. Oh, I'm putting way too much in there. Look at that. That's way too much um, pattern. <laughs> it's like, it's not that much. So I'm going to wet it a little bit. So it gets a little bit lighter. You have to follow because this is my light behind him. So I don't want to put too much of this in there. Just a little bit here and there. I'm not going to use this color for the shadowing down here. I'm going to make it a little bit warmer and a little bit more lavender-y. I guess it's the word. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of, um, I'm going to make these um, snow-covered pine trees instead of they are, this is, the background was done with AI. I just, um, I found this slot, dog sled and I put, I let AI put a background on it i wanted to um i i said switzerland uh mountains in switzerland <laughs> and so these trees are not snow covered um ai didn't do that so um sue the blue i'm using is a combination of verditer blue and ultramarine blue verditer blue is a blue i put in my palette for the winter because <laughs> it's got a purple blue verditer and um i really love that blue so these trees, uh, um, like in the photo, are warm. I'm going to make them co snow covered. And so this is the cover of snow. I'm going to just make them just blue, snow covered. This is the shadowing then. This is the shadow color of the snow. And then I'll put the dark around that. So I'm just going to put some snow. And these are going to be dark, dark green, but this is the snow that's on top of the top of the thing I, I like i said I, I pushed i squeezed it a little bit and so i'm going into the dog i brought it down a little bit so it's not exactly like you see in the picture but i always change the picture anyways to better my my experience with the picture and my composition all right so now that this is this is pretty much dry uh, close to dry dry enough and so now i'm gonna go into the mountains back here and work from here to here because it's lighter here and darker there so let me take my big round brush because I'm drawing a little bit. And so let's go over here. I'm going to use the same blues, um, probably make them a little bit more purple, a little bit more reddish purple. And they are going to be darker than the sky. So it's going to kind of go down here. But they are lighter. This part is lighter than this part. So I'll get darker as I go across here. And I wanted this to be a hard edge. That's the kind I wanted to wait for it to dry. And then I have a little, I'll do little hits over here of white, like right here, there's a little bit of hits of white, not right here, because this is, this is too far away. I want to make that duller. And so I'm just 
just going to go in here. Like I said, that's a hard edge. That's a hard edge. At first, I was looking for a reindeer sleigh, but um, dogs work just as well. <laughs> you can put little antlers on it. If you want to make a Christmas card out of it, just put little antlers on the dog. So, let's see, a little bit of maybe this blue back here. A little horizon blue in my blue. And again, I'm trying to make this a little bit lighter as I come forward, a little bit darker as I go this direction. And since there's not much to this painting, um, really work on your drawing to make sure that you get the drawing really nice. And then um, follow follow the lights and darks because it's like there's not much else there. And so it gets a little bit darker down here. I want this to be lighter than these trees, so I'm going to make this blue a little bit lighter. So this is very subtle, and um, I was talking yesterday to the class too about when you do a subtle painting, a lot of times it doesn't show in a video or in a, in a photo when you take it and di make it digital. Um, for some reason, the subtleness of, of washes, when it's really subtle, doesn't pick up really well when you take a photo, a digital photo of it. And that's too bad because sometimes some of the nicest paintings have that little subtle look to them. And so, you know, there are little there are little pieces in here that I can put in there later too that are just, they can be hard edged, but just like slightly darker for like the little texture of the snow and the rocks underneath them. So I'll work out, worry about that later. And this got too dark. See, I didn't do the sky light enough there. I would have liked to have gotten that a little bit lighter, the sky there. So I'm going to just float some of this pigment in there. Again, we were talking about smoothing out before. And smoothing out, you do not do the smoothing out. You let the water smooth out your pigment. You don't smooth it out. You need water and let the water take the pigment and smooth it out. That's how you get a beautiful, beautiful wash of smoothness. It's not you smoothing it out with a brush. It's the water smoothing it out for you. All right, this blue over here is going to be really a lot darker. And I'm going to make it so that this side of the mountain is slightly darker. So I'm using a little Prussian blue on this one. And so I'm gonna make it pretty dark um, because it dry, it's gonna dry 20% lighter. And I know, you know, I know it looks really like, whoa, he's going crazy now with the darks, but it's gonna lighten up, it lightens up. And, and we are just so, we don't know how to do that. Most of us watercolors, we look at it and we go, oh, it's way too dark, but it's gonna lighten, it's gonna lighten up. And so I'm doing the shadow side of the mountain first. Like the sun's here and it's shadow. This is the shadow side. A little bit of purple in this too. And once it's wet, that's when you float other colors in there. You can float other colors besides just one blue. You can put a couple of different blues in there. And also a little bit of lilac. I think a little bit of reddish purple would look good in there too. And then I'm going to go on this side. Make that a little bit lighter. It's fun doing mountains like this. Just if you don't want to do the sled, just do some mountains, some Switzerland, Switzerland mountains. It's super fun to do the little, the little darks in there and the, and the shadows. This is like you're doing Bob Ross mountains, right? Happy little mountains, happy little trees. A little bit more lilac. Lilac is a purple with a little bit more red in it. Still want to make it darker than the background. You can make parts lighter if you want. I mean, if I want to make parts of this lighter, that's fine because the sun is hitting this side, so that's cool.
and they're like the little bit of dark that you see in there that's like the underneath the snow um you can what you can do there is you can um do that after your do the wet and the wet and you can make that hard edged and just make it slightly darker than what you already used and bring it in there later on and not do it right now while it's wet because you know when it's wet you're gonna get soft edges right and so that's kind of hard edged but just slightly darker for the showing the underneath of the of the snow pack and then when we get down here there's a little bit of white showing over here now where you're just solid snow and this is a nice dark here and it seems like there's a little bit of putting a little bit of um like a red in there but a um like a burnt orange to dull it down completely make it more oh, hairs from the hake brush let's see i'm taking some of this to make it kind of grayer because orange like this orange burnt orange is a little bit with the with the blue makes a nice a nice gray Compliments, mix them together, make a nice gray or brown. Elder bug, come on, get out of here. <laughs> Elder bugs in my, in my studio. You can get a bunch of little of this little stuff in there too. That's fine. Um, I'll, I'll get a little bit more of that later on when I'm doing the small details. Because even stuff like that, the little small details, it's fine to get later with hard edges. Because like I said, there's not much to this painting. It's basically the mountain and the dogs and that's it and you're done. A lot of white in the, in the picture too, so... darks in here you can do them now get a little get a little bit of, the, of that um dry dry into wet surface or almost damp surface give you that the kind of look of texture gives you a blossoming texture but that's you know sometimes it's okay to get blossom texture especially when you're doing snow scenes if you get a little bit of that texture of like blossoms and um boy these hairs in here are gonna drive me nuts there's a bunch of hairs from that from when I did that hake brush. See, there's a blossom. There's a little blossom right there. But they, sometimes that's good because you get those little 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 fingers, I call them. So now that's all a little bit darker than this side can be a little bit duller, not so bright a blue. See, now it's damp, and so I'll get a bunch of that little finger stuff happening. Down here, we some of that gray down here. Look at the granulation I did get going right here with the blue. There's some granulation in there. That's really nice. That's one thing about when you're doing wet in the wet, and you're just letting it all float. All the granules come to the top, and they'll just be right there. Uh, thanks, Becky. Oh, that's cool. You actually, you got to get some pictures of your son <laughs> doing this. This is pretty cool. I mean, I, I've never seen a live one of this ever. Um, it'd be cool to see something like this. I have a cousin in Canada who, um, there's a place in Canada you can go and they do it up there and um, near Ottawa. But I would love to see this one time. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen a, a sled dog team <laughs> ever. All right, so that's the background. Let's go right into our, um, let's get our dogs and well, let's, yeah, let's get our, let's get our dogs right away. Let's go from left to right. Let's just get this guy here. So he is really dark. And so let's just go right in there and 
pick up the darks. Well, you're going to do the lights first always. You do the lights first, but most of him is dark. And so I'll do his flesh tone first, like his face. I'll give him a little bit of orangey, orangey flesh tone. And then I'll go, he's got, um, he's got that fluffy hat on. He's actually got, he's got this whole fur coat thing on. Rugged, rugged outfit here. Oh, fur and stuff happening here. So a lot of, a lot of warm, warm, warm colors. Picking up orange, reds. And you notice how I don't do parts, I do the whole thing. Because I, like, I always go with the middle tone and lights first over the whole thing. And then I'll pick out the darks that will create the shapes of objects. Look right into his, into these. His pants even have a little, made out of fur hide. Sure, he's nice and warm in that in that outfit. And then right away, I will do the sleigh, and I'll just I don't separate things yet. I'm still doing the middle tone. Darks will take care of that. Darks will uh, make you see things like to what they are. Right now, I just want it just to wash look together. I want it to feel like it's all one area and, and together. That's what I find that many students um, don't do is they do pieces, especially when you're doing people. Do the whole thing first. Do the whole, get your lights and darks all together in one big wash because then you get a nice wash, right? I mean, the, the nicest washes are the ones that are together and are, are floating together. And you don't have to do the dark ones right away. Unless you're doing like a night scene, you know, where you get to have the background super, super dark right away. Then yes, get that in and try to do everything in one wash. But here, you have, it has a little bit of both. And so I'm going to go in there. And of course, closer to the snow, I'm going to get some blue reflecting into the bottom of the sled. You know, you, you wet it and then you work it. You work the pigment. work the pigment if you want it soft and smooth you let the water do it if you need a texture then you can do as many different ways of getting texture you can spatter it you can use salt you can use um, the way you're putting it down and you can dot it to get texture you know it all depends on what you are getting what you want what you want out of that wash and then this like I said this shadow is gonna be a little bit warmer and so I'm gonna use a little bit of the lilac which is purple with red in it. It's like a little bit more of a lilac looking color. It's like a rose almost. Again, because why? It's because it's closer and I want, this is you know one time where, when you're doing a winter scene where my background is cool and my foreground's warm, um, which a lot of times when you're doing a snow scene, the background's warm and the foreground's cool. And wow, this is a bright blue there. <laughs> I may have to go over that a little bit and show you how to rub out. <laughs> and then here's some shadowing, right? Might as well get the shadowing done all in this area from the background even. Cause there's some trees back here. I'm going to put behind him, which in the photo, they're not really like they are. Um, so I'm going to make it again. I'm gonna make that up a little bit. I'm just putting some little, Shadowing. Shadows are, are darker closer to the object that's casting them. So right here would be darker than way over here. You know, the, the farther away it gets, the, the, the lighter it gets the shadow. Now the dogs, I'm going to go one by one and then just um, get, same thing. Get the light parts of them first. And they're all dark against the snow. So this is a dark. They're all, you can wet everything part of them. And then... I'm just going to use, you know, their warm color. They got some darks on them too. And I can do that after I, I as I go. 
I'm gonna give this guy a nice, nice tail coming back behind him. And again, I'm going through the whole thing with the light. I'm not putting the darks in yet. I'm gonna just stick with my lights. And here I have a nice color that's already the color of the dogs, which is like a beige. Well, they're white, but they're, because again, they're like the, they're like the shadow in the snow. It's basically the same thing as the shadow in the snow because they're white. They're white huskies. And so we're just going to use the same color that we use for the snow. A little bit warmer, though. And just go and cover them all completely with water. And then just let your pigment float. The darks will come in later. And the shadows we can put in right away, too. The shadows are connected to, to the, to the dog. Unless they're high, uh, unless their front legs are up above that, then you wouldn't get that. And I'm gonna bring them this way more than they are, because right now the sun is here, so they'd be towards you, and they don't go that long. I want to make them a little bit longer, and so that's my right. I can just make them a little bit longer. I just felt that'd be cooler to make them longer. And then I can put. Um, snow in them later like I can make snow coming all over the place I can do that later with just white paint you could spatter masking fluid too to get that look the dog in the back would be a little bit cooler than the dogs in front or in behind him just so you get the again dimension it's always about dimension right which one's front which one's behind his ears are dark, and so that will be my second wash. Again, I like to have everything just floating in here. You can float some nice colors. And as I come forward with the dogs, as I come forward here, these guys are going to be a little bit brighter, a little bit more intense. how fun this is with the dogs just running in there it's pretty spectacular if you think about it you know these dogs can do this I mean it's pretty neat all right little by little we're coming forward get a little bit more a little bit more color in there a little bit more brighter blues, more brighter orange, warmth. But you notice I'm not, I go from one to another one. I just keep on going. I keep the washes all together. Let it look like it's coming together. There's nothing better than a soft wet into wet wash where you just let things float in there. And it's not, there's no detail in that because you don't need to have detail in that yet, except for the outer edge of it. Otherwise, you really don't need to get detail in here right now. That comes in, you know, yeah, you got to get the outer edge the way it looks and the way the dog looks. But the darks will take care of the actual look of the actual everything that makes them look like the dog. Like the nose, the eye, the mouth, that's all dark. And so that's you get when you um, get to that point when it's all dry. Get the shadowing here too. The shadows are kind of coming together, and you know. And also, I, I make it look like a watercolor. I want it to look like a watercolor, so I do that with um, wet in the wet to make it look like it's all floating and it's all beautifully floating pigment on top of a piece of paper. That's what watercolor is, and so why not make it look like that? I don't care to make it look like a photograph. You know, the photograph is a photograph, and it's everything's detailed usually. Um, if you if you take the picture, I mean, a photographer can make things depth of field and make things out of focus and stuff, but but I want it to look like a beautiful watercolor. A little bit more orange, like I said, up here. I'm gonna get a little bit, I'm gonna get a little bit darker there, and a little bit more colorful. Yeah, I was t uh, I'm 
was talking to some people yesterday in my class about the AI and how a lot of these photos that I'm taking nowadays, I'm switching them around. Like this one was just a um, picture of a dog team and and the sled all um, against a dark background. And it was just kind of boring. I was thinking it was just a dark, dark background behind them, a forest basically. And I was like, well, I don't really like that. I want to have it look a little bit more. You know, so I took it into Photoshop and I, let, I, I just basically cut out the shape and said, you know, give me a mountain, <laughs> give me a Switzerland mountain in there. And it just what it gave me. And it gave me three options. And this was my favorite of all the three that it gave me. And so it's very interesting how um, it's like, it's creating scenes that it's almost like, it's kind of, it's so strange because it's doing my job for me in a way because I, I wanted, I could maybe fake that in there and find another picture, but this way it puts it right in there. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, switches over. Now I can still switch things around, but um, it gives you the idea of what you really kind of want the picture to be. It's scary how um, good it's getting. And boy, it's like, um, worried a little bit about creativity for some people when kids are in school nowadays i wonder if it'll take away their creativity and uh, or if it'll help them i don't know hopefully it'll help you know maybe it'll help your ideas if you got ideas it'll show you your ideas that you want and show across all right so there's my washes of of middle tone, middle tone, no darks in there yet. All right, now let's get these trees over here bluer. So now I'm gonna do the blue parts of these trees. And again, this is the snow part. And then I'll do is I'll get the dark, dark parts in there. And I have to wait for um, the detail darks until this is all dry that I just did, what I just did. Again, this is going to be snow on these covered trees here. I'm just making them up. They're not there in the picture, but I decided I want to put some trees right here. Let me just show you one thing about this blue. This is just way too dark for me. I don't like that darkness back up there. So I was talking to you guys um, recently in my newsletter how to eliminate things from your picture. And let's say if you feel it's too dark, I can just tickle the area and actually Rubbing out is not a bad thing. Sometimes you can use rubbing out as a technique. You know, you just, what I do is I tickle it with a um, brush that's wet. I don't scrub at all. I just tickle it with water. And then I either absorb it into my brush, put it on my, put it on my um, towel, or I take a piece of paper towel and just dab it up. I just want to get some of the parts that's a little bit lighter. And it just seemed like it got really dark, a little bit too dark for my taste. And so I'm just tickling it, letting it, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm reactivating the pigment. And it's also, also a way that you can um, soften your edges again or make things lighter, you know, because what I'm doing now is I'm just softening the pigment, letting it go back up in the water. Now it's floating again. And I can either leave it there to um, settle down again, lighter, or I can take it out and then um, put other color in there or just leave it white. I can't leave it white because it's not going to get back down to light, especially on this board. But um, it's a way of still making it look fresh, but lightening it up a little bit. And I could put a, a brighter color on top of it. Let's say I could put a little color of lavender on top of it. And that can smooth it out even more because I'm putting pigment that's floating now on top of that. It's a lighter pigment. But as long as you let it float, it'll look soft. And I can even put a different color blue in there, maybe a lighter blue. On top of that, while it's wet, let it float because again, it's all about letting the pigment float to get it soft. And that's how you soften something. But see how now this is a little bit lighter, a little bit softer, and I can still put those dark little things in there that I was, like I said, I was going to do. So nothing's ever, you know, wrong to where you cannot fix it. You can always fix every part. If you feel like it's too dark, just tickle it, tickle it, make it laugh. And then put some water in there and then just put another color in there. A little bit lighter blue. That already looks better, see? Everybody does it. We don't, you know, don't feel like, you know, you can, can't make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all do things that we didn't think 
we wanted to do or we wanted to do it better or, you know, so you can always change things. And that's one of the weirdest things that when I'm going to the American Academy and actually when you're out and you, and you start teaching in the very beginning, all my students were all saying, you know, they hear always constantly that you cannot fix a watercolor and you got to get everything right. Yes, it's best when you do it right away, but you, you can fix things. You can definitely fix things. Boy, if I couldn't fix things, I'd, be, I'd have a real big problem because <laughs> I do a lot of paintings. And a lot of times when I'm halfway through, I'm like, oh, man, that didn't turn out that wash. And so I just fix it. It can be fixed. Like if something's too dark or too hard, you could soften it by, by I say, again, tickling the, tickling the painting. All right, it's time for our darks, our dark details. And so for that, I'm going to start over here with these trees because these are dry. And so dark details, and there's going to be some really dark, dark green. I may have to mix that with ultra, uh, um, Prussian blue and my Connectum gold. It gives me a really, really dark, dark green. And I'm going to use that to show the under part of these pine trees. Top parts are not covered, so um, I'm just going to go underneath some of the light, some of the snow that's building on top of the branches. And so this is negative painting, so you've got to realize that the blue is the snow that's on top of the branches. And this is the green that goes underneath the branch that is the blue that's here right here. And it depends on how much snow you want on it. Maybe you don't want as much snow on there, and so then don't put more green. And sometimes it falls off of there, and so you'll have most half of the tree not covered, and then some of it's more covered. If it's freshly covered, then everything is covered, right? You know, so you get very little green. Pine trees in here. This make it looks more like a Christmas card too. And I'm gonna go dark against the dogs, even though their ears are dark. Do I want to keep that dark right there? Um, I'm gonna do a little rim lighting on them. It'll be fine. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, foundation and art, they definitely, um, that's everything about um, anything that you do in general. I think you have to still know all the fundamentals, you know, the fundamentals and the foundations of things like design and drawing. And um, I mean, like I said, I just hope that it doesn't not make them do that because you really need that stuff still, even though with AI, because you still have to, you know, I don't think it'd be just to have the AI do everything for you. That's like, how, how fun would that be with art? You know, I mean, art we're creating, and that's the best part about it is sitting there and painting. I don't want the AI to do it for me. Uh, I want to do it myself. And you're sitting in um, a beautiful part of the country or the world and painting plein air or sketching and that's the most fun about it. It's like, I don't want AI to take that away. I don't need to have, I, I want to be actually do the actual drawing and creating my, you know, creating the subject matter is like, that's for me, not for AI to do. All right. And so there's my, there's my little green trees. And so it's not so realistic, I guess, then it, you know, it kind of looks kind of made up, but that's okay. I, I, I like that kind of look of these kind of trees. The trees that are there are probably more realistic, yes, but I, I like these kind of trees. And again, you're the artist, you do what you want. If you want to make it look like not covered with snow, you do that, that's fine. And do the same thing on this side. This will give me some darks around him, too. Uh, let's put a little bit, let's make our green a little bit more brownish green, like a, a grayer green. And 
here I'm making it darker than it. Actually, he's darker than the background, but you know, we, again, I'm going to just make it close to the same, a little bit of both. And because it's a different color than what's in front, that'll be fine too. now the darks and details of the dogs and the guy and then that'll be it that'll be done so let's see he's kind of brownish so i'm taking the green and the orange make a brown and so i don't have a brown in my palette except for this um a mizzle and brown but that's a purple brown and so i'm just going to go in here and let me look at this picture see i'm gonna make this picture a little bit bigger if you don't mind for a second Bring it over here to look at it. What is actually happening? What what he's got on? Let's make him really big. So he has and the sides are a little bit darker. Underneath his chin is darker. His whole chest area is, is dark. All right, that gives me an idea. That is hard to see when it's this small because I'm actually using this <laughs> in in my painting, and it's only on my monitor. So so that means. He's got like two wings on the side here of his hat. They're dark. We'll put facial features in later. And you almost don't need facial features, really. And then inside here in the middle looks kind of nice and dark. Like underneath his chin was dark. And then through here was dark. And you'll have that right in front of you at all times. So that you can see it just so just copy that that's fine see that's where drawing and memorizing things comes in handy because you memorize it and then you just know what's dark and what's light and you know the shape of things and let's put a little purple as we're going down the darkness underneath his arm was dark here Got these really neat gloves on that has a little fur on the edge of them. You know, form and, and again, foundation of drawing is the form and knowing how much uh, proportions things are, and yeah, you know, all those things are important to know when you're when you're learning to draw. And what's in front of what and what's behind something. Yeah, put the little and some of the stuff I make up. I, I, I you know I don't know this really well. And so again, if you know dog sledding and how all the intricate parts of it, then you would know how this sled is built and you know everything about how what goes in front of what and how it's connected and I don't even know how it's connected I think it's connected right there but don't know for sure good to know your subject matter and know and love your what you paint know and love what you paint that's always tell my students because then you can make things up because you know it well enough to make things up So let's, I'm going to leave him alone for now and let's go into the dogs and the dogs have a really nice dark dark black um, coat on them and so I'll make it and that's just I'm not going to make it just totally black I'll make it like a purpley black blue black and then what are the looks of a let's see how about a picture here of 
towards them. I can see. Eyes, nose, and mouth are dark, and it's got like a wrap around. Actually, not all of them are the same. These two back here are a little bit different than the front and the front and the markings. The two eyes, the nose. Inside the mouth, you make you make warm. And then this whole back here is nice and dark. Going down the side of this one leg. Same with this one right next to it. And it's so small, the painting. I mean, if it was bigger, I'd have to really make sure my drawing is right on. But this is so small that as long as I get close to it, it'll be fine. I will put some red in the mouth. I'm not going to make the mouth just black. It's got a, it's got a pink tongue, and so it's going to be a lot of red in there. Or warmth. You don't want to make it too red to make it look like he's been chewing on meat or something. <laughs> Just slightly red. And then let's see, what did I do for the, I did like a purpley black, bluish black. I like how it comes on the front, the side here, on the side of them a little bit. This one, a lot of these are just, they don't have hardly any black markings on them. one has some darkening. This one doesn't. Do I do give it anyways? Nose, two eyes. And again, just a hint of it is enough, too. You don't have to make um, it look like a photograph of these dogs. It, um, it, it's just enough to indicate that it is a husky, and that's enough to show you don't get it perfect like the photo. You don't have to make it look at the photo at all, actually. There's a little wire or the, the, the thing that's holding them all together. A little, I don't know if that's a rope or a harness or like a metal. I see things like that. You should know. Here, I'm going to make him. I'm going to keep this dog's ears light because they are and that way it'll, the background will sit and help the shape of the dog and make his nose and mouth a little bit warmer this one over here same thing oh this one i'm going to give dark dark ears to and let's make him a little bit darker around and his tongue i definitely want to make orange or red the tongues are always hanging out, it seems like, when they're running like this. Yeah, this guy's got his tongue coming forward. Yeah, I still, work, I'm going to be working on the mountains a little bit more as soon as I get these dogs done. Just a little bit more to get... A little bit more of them to show the little ground that's in there. Like, you know, the darker parts. So let me first get these dogs done, and I'll get back into that real quickly. I'm just making the form of the dogs look good. Because there's certain mark markings in certain dogs that they all have that kind of close to the same kind of looking um, of the markings in there. So if you do a lot of dog pictures, you start knowing what, you know, how to make a certain dog look a certain way. I'm going to also spatter a little bit away. And actually, let me take a little bit. This is almost too white right down here. Though it, it's okay to be all white. Now let me just put a little, little bit of blue in there. Very slight amount of blue just to kind of get rid of some of the, the stark white. Just a little bit. Just a little bit here. 
the shading and it may soften this edge up a little bit. Make it blue, not green, because I'm just put a little green in there. All right, now let's get the back to the mountains in the background, and then we'll be done. I'm going to do a little bit on him, too. So in the, here in the mountains, that, see, like, you can see some of the darks that are behind the snow. And um, I'm just going to go in there with a, with a dry brush or a dry surface and then take my brush and just tap it across here to get some of these dark little parts underneath there. And they're hard edge, but they're not so, so dark that um, they take away from the nice wash I just put in there. It just gives a texture. It gives a little texture. I'm using a little gray, a little gray, a little dark. Especially along this area right here, there's a bunch of little things you can see underneath behind. And so remember, I, I made that all soft, and now I'm dulling it up again. And But see, you can go back and forth. There's nobody, you know, and it's still going to look fresh. It's still going to have a fresh look to it. Because everything I put down, I left and I left it alone once I put it down. And when it's wet in the wet, it's going to soften. If it's like this, it's not going to soften. It's just going to be a hard edge. But I want it to look like texture anyway, so I don't want it to soften. I want it to look like it's a hard texture. It's underneath the snow. this in here there's a bunch of this little texture here so get really nervous and 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 shake see how nervous i am i'm shaking so that's what you do you just shake a little bit <laughs> here's a lot dark and i don't want to make it so much though that's competing against the dogs the dog part has to be the most important part and I noticed that this little thing, there's a little thing on this line here that's orange that controls, it's, it's part of the line here. This one, I would probably sign right here because it's got a great spot for this sign so that, or is it over here like you're running? No, it's over here. I would sign it right there so it doesn't take away from this coming forward. And I can also spatter white paint in here. I can take like white paint and I can put little dots of like snow piling up like when they're running, it just spatters. You can do that or even spatter it. You can do that too, but I'm not going to spatter this. I don't want to make it that messy. A little bit of like where it's churning up. Get a real fine lines now. And also you have a white up here too if you want, but I think this is pretty much close. Let me look at it from a distance. Okay, I think the only part I have is up there. This is too bright, There's too much light in here, so. down a little bit and if I wanted to make it look almost like a photograph I could still do that I mean I could still keep on going and get every little piece of detail in there but I just like to make it more of an impression of what this is not the, a copy of what the photograph is down a little bit so this is a little bit softer edged I don't want to take it away from this sled and now let's get a really super super dark dark to get in here and just kind of get detailed on him 
a little bit more than he is. guys I think that is about it can't see anything else that I want to do unless you guys see something that I missed something that bothers you a little bit this line seems a little bit dull here so we need something in here it looks too wide open That's about it. All right, I don't see anything else. Uh, again, unless you see something, <laughs> um, these hairs up here, look at how I make little hairs and there's, are they, are they stuck in it? No, I just made a really small line with a hair right here too. Oh well, that, that nothing I can do about. Don't, when you're using a hake brush, make sure you get all the hairs off of there before you get doing it, using it. Bluer. All right, that's it. I can sign it right down here. I would just sign it right here. Put my stamp on there, and I'm all done. <laughs> hey, Lynn. All right, I think um, nobody's got any questions anymore. If you don't, um, have a great rest of the Sunday. And on Thursday, we'll meet again. And I have no idea what we're going to be painting. I'll figure that out tomorrow. <laughs> and so, and also, if you do have suggestions about something you want to learn how to paint, um, please, please, please let me know. Um, I, I may or may not use it depending on what the photo is or the idea is. I never know. I have to, I'm, I'm usually have a lesson. This week's lesson will, in my newsletter will be about um, the use of whites. And I, I ordered four different kind of whites, white paint, gouache and watercolor white and how to mix it in and what mixes better. And I, I don't know yet about what that is because I didn't do it. I didn't test them yet. So I'll be testing that probably tomorrow. I'll be testing the whites, um, zinc white, primary white, opaque, um, titanium white. So that's gonna be coming up um, in the newsletter this Tuesday. So if you don't get my newsletter, get it either on my website or sign up for it also on my website. All right, so everybody have a great Sunday. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.